Well, essentially when I was pregnant, we didn't know anything about Arden's condition. Um, I had had ultrasounds early and essentially they just kept saying that I had like, um, I had an anterior placenta, so it was on the front and they kept saying that the baby was really hard to see. So they would say that, you know, like I asked to get ultrasound pictures printed and they would say, no, we can't get those. Um, he's not in a good position. We can't get him in a good position. And so every time I had an ultrasound, I felt like I didn't get hardly any information. And I'd always come out upset because it was like, well, because of COVID, Brody wasn't allowed to come into the, into the ultrasounds with me. So I'd always come out upset because it, it felt like I can never get a good view of him. We never got any good imaging, um, that kind of thing. Then it came up on ultrasound in Grand Prairie that um, he had suspected club feet. That's what they said. It was potential or probable, probable. probable club, club foot. Um, and so that freaked us out because we were like, okay, well, what does that mean? And our OB just reassured us that's, you know, not a big deal. If it's only club feet, they'll deal with that after birth. You know, you, you can do things to help that. And so she never referred us for further testing or anything like that. I got sent to another OB in Grand Prairie who was going to assess me and then do, she, she would be the one doing um, a C-section for me. So when I went to her, when they, I got scheduled in to see her, she wanted to do another ultrasound because she didn't like the whole club foot thing um, and that we didn't get referred for further testing with that. So she ordered another ultrasound really fast um, so I got, I went to Peace Diagnostics, got another ultrasound, and then she, and then I went to see her directly after. And she's like, I will wait for your results to come in from the ultrasound. And so when I talked to her, she said, from the ultrasound results, the baby's abdomen is too small. And she goes, if it was just club feet, I wouldn't be worried. But the abdomen being small too, um, those are two anomalies that could lead to various conditions that could be chromosome changes or we don't know. So she essentially said, um, I'm going to try and get in touch with some of my colleagues in Edmonton. I want you to, um, you know, go, go home essentially and I'll, and I'll call you later. And that was on a Wednesday night and she called us like 10 minutes later and said, I have you hooked up with some of my colleagues at the Royal Alex. I want you to go to Edmonton tomorrow, tonight. Yeah, we left that night. Mm -hmm. Tonight, because I scheduled you ultras another ultrasound um, at the, oh, what was it? The Royal Alex. At the Royal Alex mm -hmm. um, for tomorrow. And I want you to pack a bag as if you're staying. And that was the last time that Arden and I, that I was home till Arden and I came home in December. So that was April 22nd, I believe we left. Mm -hmm. And then Arden and I, came home on December 15th. So that was the last time I was home. So that Thursday I went in for an ultrasound and at 11.30 my appointment was, and I didn't actually get out of the hospital till 6.30. So we had, I, like they sent me in for the ultrasound and that took a long time because they had the ultrasound techs look at it, they had the radiologists look at it. I had one of the doctors come in and actually look during the ultrasound. Um, and then following that they sent me for an MRI, a fetal MRI, um, and then they sent me for non-stress tests. Um, and then essentially they just, they, like they set us up with, you know, helped us find hotel accommodations. Um, and then basically the next, on Friday, we got calls from uh, the neonatologists in the NICU. We got calls from the geneticists. We got calls from uh, the, the new, the OB who was going to um, and essentially scheduled me for a C-section the next week. So our, the C-section was on um, April 29th, Arden's birthday. Um, and so basically all those calls happened that Friday and then the C-section was the next Wednesday. So we basically, it was like, we went from thinking we had, you know, typical healthy baby uh, pregnancy that was going relatively well. And then all of a sudden it was like, your baby is, pro you know, we're planning with the NICU team for you to have a stay in the NICU. And to make things just a little bit harder through all of this because of the COVID, COVID protocols I had to sit in the vehicle the whole time so with uh, when Rail was in the hospital getting all these tests done uh, I wasn't able to be with her even even the ultrasounds prior to this um, and then once they found out the results um, 
we had to do conference calls. Yeah, basically we had to, like Brody, had, I, just phoned, I just phoned him when we were spending that day. Just press this button. Um, because I was in the hospital at the Royal Alex from about 11.30 to 6.30. And so I had to just phone him and the doctors would talk to him over the phone. But it was essentially finding out we weren't gonna have a normal baby, a healthy baby, all by myself. So that was really hard. And then, and then we sat in our hotel room till the next Wednesday and just hunkered down because nothing, you know, the whole world was closed at that time. It was, there was no eating in restaurants. There was, you know, the streets were empty. It was really weird because it was when everybody was off work and it was just, it was very eerie, kind of strange mm -hmm. feeling for that time. And so then we, um, yeah, got ready to have Arden. And so when Arden was born, like we went into the hospital to the Royal Alex the day that he was born and I wasn't worried for the C-section at all. It was like, okay, whatever, you know, women have C-sections every day. It turned out to be a really, really, really difficult C-section. I essentially, um, essentially the anesthetic that they give you, the spinal anesthetic didn't work on me. So it was very painful, um, excruciating actually, and um, very scary, I guess. It was very scary for Brody to see me in that much pain. And, and then when Arden was born, he came out flatline. So he was, he needed to be, they had the NICU team in the next room. Uh, they needed to resuscitate him and intubate him immediately. Um, and then I, ne I didn't get to see him. Um, in the operating room. Brody went to see him and kind of just snapped a couple really scary pictures to show me um, what baby looked like. And yeah, we didn't know he was gonna be a boy, so they told me, it's a boy, what's his name? And I said, his name is Arden. Because <laughs> we knew, I knew his name was gonna be Arden. And he is an Arden. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, and then they wheeled, like basically they left with Brody and, and Arden and, uh, you know, to, to get him where he needed to be. He was on a, on a, on a vent. Yeah, so even when I got to go and see him, um, it was once they resuscitated him. Um, and even so, so they took him into the room next to Rael. Uh, and while I was in there, I basically just stood in the corner because there were so many procedures that still had to be done. Um, and there was still a lot of unknowns on what was going on with him. So I think at that time there was me and six other um, specialists, so doctors, um, that were all crowded around him. Um, just trying to, you know, get all his vitals and make sure that he was stable enough to transport because he couldn't stay. Um, in the labor and delivery room, they needed to transfer him to the NICU. Um, so yeah, it was it was pretty scary. And essentially, so when they they took me to like a little I don't know recovery room, which was really kind of like an office where these two nurses were working, and like they were really kind and just kind of chatted and took my mind off of everything. But essentially, I just laid there, and then when they wheeled Arden in, they wheeled him in in his isolate bed. Um, he was attached to a ventilator and nitric oxide to, to open his lungs up. Um, and I just got to lean over and, and you know, say hello and, and hold his hand for a brief second and then they took him away. And I didn't see him again until 10 o'clock that night. 